All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. Craig and I are excited today to have a returning guest, Marvin Berlin. Marvin, you were on probably uh, maybe a couple of years ago when we first, when I first kind of launched this um, prior, to, prior to my better half joining, right, Craig? Yeah, I wouldn't call me the better half, but right. yeah, the other anyway, half. No, prior, prior to Craig, uh, prior to uh, see, I was being I'm being trained from being married. Like you're just supposed to say like better half, right? So you, yeah, I know, but that's for your wife, not for but, me. But uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so Marvin, you were on, and and you know we spoke about um, same day dentistry, which we've I've brought. You know, you you were always kind of the voice in my ear in my career about you know changing the optics of how you can look for opportunity and harvest stuff in your dental practice. Yep. And um, that's just been an overwhelming theme. Actually, I think we even put some of those concepts in the Bulletproof Dental Practice book that we published. Um, but I mean, it's just great. I yeah. think it's just great advice. And you've been a mentor to me in my entire career. And um, I've really enjoyed being able to mastermind with you and brainstorm with you the times that we do connect. So anyway, bud, welcome back to the, uh, to the, to the podcast. It's great to be here. And I'll tell you, I, uh, you guys have an amazing following because I get People stop me all the time and go, hey, I heard you on Bulletproof. And so yeah, that's it's, awesome. it's uh, I mean, I bet I've had a dozen people separately tell me that. So just random. I mean, I'll be at an AACD meeting or, a, you know, an AGD meeting or something. So it's, it's very cool. And it uh, is cool. You know, it, it, it awesome. has been cool to see seeing it grow. Like I'll go and speak certain places and then, you know, it's just not on your radar and people come up and be like, I love what you know what you're saying and this, that and the other. And it's just, it kind of takes, it takes you back a little bit because you're like, holy shit, I forgot. Like that's making impact for, for folks. So. No, it um, really is. And congratulations, you guys, you and Craig both, uh, just what you've done with Bulletproof has been awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Book, well, thank you. It's, been, and, a, it's and, been a cool sounding board, especially since he and I, you know, Craig and I have kind of similar based, well, similar size practices, mine being multi-location and him being, his being uh, single. So it's good that we can bounce things off of each other, um, sometimes online and offline, if you will. And so that's been, been helpful for for the users for another from a from a context marvin why don't you tell some people who haven't been exposed to you before like your background and the size of your practice and sure um, and just because because you definitely are one of those people that has the chops to say a lot of stuff i mean i can remember when you told me it, it blew my mind back in the day you said you know our practice did a million dollars this month yeah this was 10 years ago uh, you know 10 years ago and i and i remember just being blown away by that and being like well that's my north star now like i gotta figure out how to do that um and it just blew me away so anyway i'll stop talking you we have some maybe give a little background of, of who you are and where you, why you are where you are i'm glad i'll be honored to and yeah we uh i think we have one of the few eight figure practices um in north america in single location um mm -hmm. with four docks and Jeez. uh, <laughs> uh we it, but it's you know we we've our, and going back to our original podcast, it all started with this concept of uh, saying yes and combination of same day dentistry and just doing stuff today and not putting it off. And, and it, it just, the, the place grew. We just, it, 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 the mindset of the mentality of people wanting, I mean, it's Amazon, it's, it's everything that we do. We want it now and patients want dentistry now. And that little concept just grew. And we just said, we grew it as a mindset. We said, you know what? We're going to create a practice to where if someone wants veneers tomorrow, they can have them. If they want them this afternoon, we'll make it happen. If they want an implant placed, you know, this afternoon, they don't have to go and wait three weeks. Like we just, it's our mindset. You just so, say yes. Yeah, yeah, we really do. If there's a way to physically make it. We don't and that's your culture too. In your, I mean, yes, it's, it's you and the docs, you know, you say yes to things, but like that's a top down culture that you've created in your team and everyone just kind of is saying like, yeah, we'll get it. We'll make it happen. And I think, the grit and making it happen is, is just a game changer. Yeah. It, it's been awesome. And people come watch and they're kind of freaked out about it or they freaked out when they hear me and then they come see it and they're like, and everyone says the same thing. I go, wow, we figured it would be a lot noise. It's real quiet. And, and mm -hmm. even though it's, you know, very productive and we do have million dollar months, that's our, you know, and that is crazy with four dentists, like, right. Like Craig, you know, I know you've had those months, but you obviously have a bigger, you know, a lot more providers, which is not taking anything mm -hmm. away from it, but it is kind of crazy. I'm thinking like four dentists. Wow. Uh, that's I mean, crazy. How many hygiene over there, Dr. Uh, Martin? Nine. Nine. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Nine. Yeah. I think that is, it's interesting to just pause for a second because it's an easy thing to just get to yes. But 
it's actually, it's a simple philosophy, but it's not easy to do. And the people that say yes most, fre- most frequently, are, those are the growth mindset people. Those are the, those are the leaders. And because uh, some days you don't feel like saying yes. Some days you're backed up and you got to do this or do that. And Sally at the front desk is complaining and you still have to find a way to get to yes. And it just shows more than anything, the philosophy and the, um, the top down leadership that you know, people will follow you. If you're the one always in the trenches willing to do it, people will follow you into that, into the, into those spaces. I've had doctors here that work in the practice that they are routine for, they're well known for never saying yes. And eventually mm-hmm. people stop asking you. So if it's yeah, constantly, yeah. can I put this patient in? No, we can't do it. No, your, your admin team will not ask you the fifth and 10th time you say no. So you start shutting down the culture. So it's a cultural it's so phenomenon, great. just that. That's a great, so that's true. a great point, Craig. And it is true. We've created a team that, uh, you know, they, it's just expected that that's how we operate. And, and we don't even think anything twice about it anymore. They're just, they're, it's always, we're always looking for opportunity time. So it's good. It's a good way to, I, I like practicing that way. I really do. So let's jump into, I want to talk about, obviously you, you, you've kind of trained me in my practices from same day dentistry and, and helping to learn how to say yes for the team. But I know that, you know, one of your other passions has been photography. Yep. Um, I just it saw is. you with, um, a picture of you with a uh, guest we just had on um, Miguel was on, right? Miguel Ortiz. Yeah. yeah. And uh, right. I saw a picture of you guys on Instagram together and it was like, you know, I think like it was two, two dental pro or two photography dental pros. Um, and uh, so tell me a little bit about what you're doing with that and, and why you think that's kind of the best way to help get treatment acceptance and monetize your time and, you know, work hard, not smart. I mean, work smart, not hard. <laughs> All these things. <laughs> Uh, so jump into that and what you're doing with that, Marvin. Absolutely. And uh, well, what Miguel Ortiz, how good is that guy? He's yeah, amazing. Good. Yeah, we had a good time on the podcast. That He's book is good. off, and that book he made is just off yeah, the charts. Really, beautiful. It's just off the chart. It really is. Um, and and as you know, and, and I think Miguel has said this too. He's very uh, uh, artistic minded when it comes to photography, and which you need to be. And that's definitely there's a place. And I'm, I, I, uh, but where I teach photography, and I've been teaching photography for 15 years. I went and found my original keynote that I made back in 05 when I did my first study club of photography and it was just been building. I was looking back at the cameras we used back then. I would have given my left arm for what we, what you can buy at Best Buy now that the right. cheap seats. Um, but what we, the, the reason we talk, the reason I talk about photography is just using it and just absolutely uh, having it part of your practice because I, you know, I'm not saying it's the reason, but I guarantee you without photography, we would not be doing 10, 11 million bucks a year because we have, I think we have seven cameras here. I mean, there, there's, everybody gets photos. Every new patient gets photos. Every case gets before and afters. Every, you know, we're just, and every doc has his own camera. Several of the hygienists have cameras. We just, <clears throat> it's how we operate because we know that's the only way we can code, sell dentistry is to co-diagnose. And the only way we can co-diagnose is to look up at the screen and, and you can't have sloppy photography. We've learned to, you just gotta, there's, there's really three keys to this and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you've got to first have the right equipment and just, mm-hmm. just get a camera. I see so many docs trying to cut corners. I mean, they'll buy an iCat, they'll buy a $150,000 machine, but they'll, they'll take pictures with their iPhone or, mm-hmm. or point and shoot. A point and when shoot, yeah. You just need, you gotta, you gotta get a camera. And number two is you got to learn how to use it and, and learn the settings. And then number three is you've got to put a system in place that it's automatic where you don't even, the doctors need to stay. I mean, I teach doctors how to take pictures, but then I teach them, okay, you've learned this. Now don't ever do it. Yeah. Give me somebody in your practice that can do this where you have a handpiece in your hand, not a camera hand uh, on a daily basis. Because if you leave it up to, to the doctors it to take the happen. pictures in the practice, you're going to get busy. It's just no way they're, they're going to cook. They're going to, they're going to have a morning like today we had where pe- kid broke his tooth and he's going to, a new patient is going to be in and they're not going to take pictures because he's the only one who knows. And how. honestly, like, let's be honest. It's not the best use of the doc's time to be taking pictures. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, and it's a harder thing to say, let me get pictures and then let me get them loaded. And then, and then it's like, it's weird and it's a weird conversation. And so it's better to have them loaded up on the screen, come in and then do your magic. Yeah. It's so true. And I think you- it's also important to talk about too. I, I see a lot of doctors like, yeah, we have an intraoral photography. We have an intraoral camera, like a little USB pluggable one, one that has like a field of view of like a single tooth. And I, I've never used one of those. I never, we never use one in the practice. We take full 
you know, SLR pictures retracted with, with um, uh, mirrors and occlusals on every single patient have, have done so for probably 12, 15 years. And there's a magic that happens when that photo goes up on the screen and there's nothing said. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to be a brilliant salesperson. The first question out of the patient's mouth, usually, especially if they have a lot of silver and mercury fillings in their mouth is, whose mouth is that? Yeah. Is that me? It's a disbelief. It's almost like you're not connecting. It's like, it's like if you wanted to sell people on cleaning their air conditioning ducts, you would probably be best to insert a small camera up into the ducts and pull it up on the screen. That's you. Can we do it live? Can we see your air conditioning ducts right now live? Your, great idea. your furnace. It's so good. I'm live. so stealing like, that. Right? Imagine That's that. Like, let's idea. just see, you know, because your house was only built three years ago. It might not, not be business. that bad. You know what I'm saying? But there's a realization because you have, so, so Pete and I always talk about storytelling brands. The hero, the guide, and the villain. So, right? Am I got that right? Hero, guide, and villain? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it the villain? Well, there's no villain. It's just in what we talk hero about. It's guide just the hero and, and the guide. There's, okay, but there it. has just, to be a, there's a problem though too. Right. So the hardest business to get into is to try to convince a consumer that they, ha they don't have a, pro they have a problem. So if I start telling, you know, they come to the dentist, they just want okay. a checkup or want something like that. The minute they see their mouth, even though they don't have a problem, they're just coming in to get a filling or, I mean, a checkup rather, instantly they're like, what the hell is all that shit? Like, uh, what is that black stuff? Mm. Is that in my mouth? And they're like, let me see a mirror. And they, they start equating it. But the reason why I started this conversation is there's something different about the occlusal shot versus this idea that dentists have like, oh no, I want to really zoom. I want to see the micro crack. You know what I'm saying? So That's seeing the landscape right. and then being relate the picture to their mouth is something very important versus a single tooth. They don't, re at least in my anecdotal experience, they don't resonate with it as much. No, Craig, you're exactly right. It, and, and I tell this story in my, in my lectures for photography when in 91, I had just graduated dental school two years ahead of time. And I met a, my first mentor, his name was Bud Sipko. He's a dentist in Vancouver, Canada. And, and I got to hear him speak <clears throat> and say, I, I'd heard, I'd been in dental school for four years and didn't even know what CE was. I got out of school and I went to this first class and, and this guy was amazing. And I even flew up to Vancouver to, to be a patient of his because I really just resonated with him. Well, he did this thing in 91. This is before digital photography or whatever, but where we had an exam, I said, he goes, well, we need to do our exam on two different days. I was like, what are you talking about? He's well, I got to get all my, gather my data and whatever. I didn't even know what he's talking about. So I get up there and we do an exam on Tuesday and lo and behold, he pulls this big old honking camera out, takes uh, pictures. I've never even them. seen this. It was like the old Yashika dental eye. Well, he goes, okay, well, you can go. We'll see you. He, you can't even do the exam yet because there's digital isn't been in. He had to send right. the pictures to like Wolf camera, get them developed. He has his, all his patients back two days later oh my God. to present treatment. And that the photography was so important to him. It, what, he wouldn't even present it yet to the patient until he had the photos. Well, I had got back two days from that. And I'm, I've never seen my teeth. Here I am a dentist and I'm just getting out of school and I'm thinking I know everything. And I, he pulls this you know, picture out and sure enough, he said the occlusal view that blows him away and it blew me away. I was like, holy crap, look at all those mercury fillings and cracks. And I think I'm only 25 years old. I got stress everywhere. And he just sat back and he just said, what do you think Marvin? And I was like, oh my gosh, now I get it. And, and so it, it blew my mind because I realized right then and there that this is how you, this is how you sell dentistry. There's no right. other and, and, way. And you know what, for those dentists that don't understand this, it's when a patient is asking questions, you are winning. So if you're the only one talking, you're actually losing. Mm -hmm. So at questions, especially in a consultation, anything, is that me? First question. Yes. Is that my lower right or my lower? Right? Well, we use the mirror. The lower left is that. Oh wait. So what's the, just keep, as long as they're asking questions, they're going to buy. And it's really important that we talk. I just want to use my same disqual my same qualifier every time because every time dentists that are listening to this here, buying, selling, all that stuff, they get all freaked out. So listen, the U.S. government spends millions of dollars a year having people like us put on their seatbelts because we're so dumb we don't wear our seatbelts and we're dying because of it. So everything has to be sold. Even wearing your seatbelts, quitting smoking has to be sold. You're saying educational and selling are yes, used interchangeably. Yes, correct. Yeah. So yeah. what we're talking about is educating people. If you educate your patients, they make better decisions, they keep their teeth longer, and they spend less money. So it's incumbent upon you as a dentist. You are in the public health domain. We've heard your disclaimer many times. I know, but, I, but I, I, maybe it's the first time someone's here in this podcast. Okay. <laughs> so, so get out of your ass. And It's not about selling. You have to educate people. If people know, so if our patients know what we know, they make better decisions, they actually long-term spend less money, 
but maybe short term spend more because they won't let things fall apart. But yeah, I think it's important as long as people are asking questions. Like, Marvin, yeah, let's just, I'm going to give you a hypothetical. Let's say someone sure. has, is not taking a photo series on new patients, right? They want to get into photography. What is, could, the, could it be done for under a thousand bucks? That's going to be tough. Okay. Um, I've found, I've found a entry guy, level. I'm just saying entry level. Entry level is about 1500 bucks. Okay. Uh, for a camera? <clears throat> for a for camera. For a camera setup. A, a, a digital camera, a macro lens and a, some sort of flash, like a ring flash or a point flash or whatever. Um, the best one I've found for entry level is a company called Lester Dine. They've mm-hmm. been around since like the uh, Yeah, I just remember having my first one. Yeah, and, and they have an incredible introductory package. It's $15, $14.99, and it's all you need. And, and honestly, we've got, I've got four of those. And I mean, they give you the, the settings and all that too, because I've, to, yeah. I've tried to cowboy it myself in the past and saying like, oh, I'm going to put this together and I'm going to buy this Chinese knockoff lens and this Chinese knockoff uh, yeah, whatever. The settings and it alone ended up are costing it, yeah. me so much time and it never, it didn't work. And so yeah. I love when things are packaged and the settings are pre-built and all that stuff. Um, so go ahead. I just wanted to. No, no, no. That's so true. And, and that's the beauty of that Lester 9 package is, is that it comes off. I mean, it's literally you turn it on, turn the flash on, you're there. You're, you're, yeah. It comes with an SD card. Um, but in, and I'm, I, you need to know though a little bit about it. I've learned this and I've, and having taught docs, You've got to get over this curve of knowing what some of the buttons are on the camera. I mean, it just because inevitable, you're going to take a picture and the photography gods are going to go, hey, they're going to be all dark today. And you have no freaking idea why all your pictures are dark or why they're light or why they look bluish. And there, there's some simple little settings of like, okay, just and so that's where I've been trying to help docs just get over this. I mean, I'm not, I don't teach the, the big artistic, the lips and, and all that stuff. And this is just, I mean, that's my girl. And I want to, I want to, tu- I want to touch on this. So you guys don't want to comment. Cause I'm about to go. It's, it's, it's just something that really bothers me. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to say it. Cause I think it needs to be said and to help dentists. So there's, there's a lot of, I don't know how familiar Marvin or how much you're in, investing in Instagram and stuff like that for yourself. Um, but, but I think there's a big disconnect and dentists collapse these two domains Dentists believe that, you know, they see guys like Miguel Ortiz and he's truly gifted. But if you go on Miguel Ortiz's page, he is building a Instagram page to influence dentists, right? And, and, and if, I, if I'm understanding what you're doing, you're, you're, you're teaching courses so that patients can learn to say yes. And they're very two separate domains. Unfortunately, right. fall artistic, under the, artistic photography well, versus. But these are huge distinctions because the average dentist does not know which one to go to. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know, I can, there's a Marvin Berlin course. There's a Miguel Ortiz course. And there's this course or that course. Figure out what you want to do. If you're, you're going to start doing lectures on dentistry to dentists, I'm going to, sorry, Marvin, I think that your course is probably not going to be the best one for them. I don't, I don't know. I would imagine. I, oh, no, I would agree. I, yeah. That's not what I'm. Yeah. So, I'm, but if you, but in the same domain, if you're looking to take photos or have your assistant and team build a system where you take photos to get to an eight figure million dollar practice and helping patients get to say yes, I'm going to probably say that it's going to be better to do Marvin Berlin's course, but don't confuse the two. Because I see a lot of dentists that don't want to lecture and they have no desire to lecture, but the photos they're posting on their cosmetic uh, Instagram websites will scare the shit out of most patients. Mm-hmm. Like I've had patients that say, come in for veneers and say, are you going to do this on me? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, yeah, we're going to prep it a little bit. I don't want you to do that nubbing thing to my teeth. <laughs> nubbing, making cat teeth. Someone yeah, said yeah, cat teeth you, once to me. I was like, gonna, are you going to make them oh into cat God. teeth? Are you going to drill them down? So I think it's really important that we – to draw the line for the, for the dentist that's looking. If you're looking to enroll patients, that's one very specific thing. We love artistic photos of uh, of zoomed in teeth and with you know jewels lipstick, on the lips and jewels. Yeah. We love that stuff. That's dental porn for dentists. But for other people, they don't resonate with that. They don't resonate with the micro anatomy. When you zoom in and show them the surface texture that we all love. They don't think they'll like that. They're like, why is it so lumpy? Why is it so many? Why is there so much? Why is it so, <laughs> so bumpy? I don't, like those ridges. I don't like those ridges. <laughs> well, it's also because, you know, they think their teeth are bowling ball smooth. They're not. They're not. They don't know what they like. They don't know what they want. So you have to tell you're, them. You're so right. Well, look, <laughs> really zoom, in on, zoom in on your face. Like take a macro thing of your face. You have pores and you have wrinkles and, and interesting din- dynamic. But if it was smoothed out, you would look like a cartoon. Or Instagram filter. Or an Instagram filter. 
<laughs> no, what's, what's funny is I swear I, I, uh, I learned how to do, I mean, you know, I was kind of intrigued. And so I got my wife and, and I said, okay, I want to take pictures of your lips and your teeth really up close. And so literally this past weekend, I mean, like two days ago, she's sitting in there and I brought some sauce boxes home and I'm just figuring out, I'm just like, I can do this. And, and, and sure enough, I took these, I thought really cool pictures. They were, they were very cool for a dentist to see. I was freaking out. And she was like, you are not showing those to anybody. She said the exact same thing. She goes, right. Can you smooth out my lips? I'm like, I'm looking at it, you know, one hundred times magnified. Right. Goes, my teeth are really pretty teeth. She goes, oh, they're, they're all these grooves. Like, right, right. Can you, oh, God, I have a problem. No, you don't have a problem. No, she So it's, it's just, it's an interesting thing that I, there's, just, there's a saying, I don't, I'm right. going to screw up the saying, but it's like, we are on the inside of the bottle. We can't read the label. So we know too much as we love the nuances of anatomy because we know at the micro, if it looks like this, at the macro, it'll look exactly like what the patient wants. Mm-hmm. But we, we, the micro photography does not resonate. I'd love to do like a, a study where you show 10 photos and say, how do these make you feel? So the beautiful zoomed in artistic lumpiness of the teeth and we see all the microanatomy and then the macro of like what's wrong with your occlusal arch and what motivates them to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And I bet you will be, it'd be very interesting. Where's the picture that moves the needle, right? Right. Right. And why, why are you doing it? Do you want to just, you know, get Marvin Berlin to call you and say, my God, that was the most beautiful surface texture. Or do you want 5,000 patients to call you saying, Hey, get all the, get all this work. Fix that. (laughs) Fix this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. Um, and you're right. That I think the two biggest pictures that we take are the occlusal pictures and then the, the shot that shows the buccal corridor. So um, if you were to take, like, I'm going to give you another hypothetical. Yeah. If you were going to take, because right now we take probably, you know, Craig, I think you and I agreed that we take like 10 pictures in a series. I forget exactly. But if, you, yeah, if someone, if, if that just seemed like daunting for someone, Marvin, for every patient, what would the, what would the minimum number that you think could be to do? And then and maybe this is compromising your, your teaching, your class, no, but I'm no. just saying like, Hey, if you could even get three pictures or four pictures quality on every new patient, it would, it would change the game. You don't have to do 10 and, and profiles and all that stuff, but what would they be if, if so? Um, the money shots are your, are your close up smile mm-hmm. and the occlusal shots. Okay. Those are, if you, those are the three that when I pull them up on, cause we do 10 as well. We do just 10. It's, mm-hmm. you know, you got your, Yep. Just the ones that we all take because we all it's nothing fancy um but more often than not when i'm looking and i'm showing a patient their smile the two things that i hear more often is the buccal corridor wow mm-hmm. look how dark that is mm-hmm. and are those my teeth when they see the mercury fillings i mean that just like craig said i get that three or four times a day so so full face once, well, uh, not even the full, well the full face is you got to have that for right so, but, so I'm, I'm getting to the four. So it's really the four yeah. things. You're a full yeah. face. I zoomed in just on the smile and then too oh, retracted oh. would be kind of the, the bare minimum. If you're wanting I know, to but dip it, yourself. But if you're not, if you're going to get stuck in this conversation, you know, you, Peter, you preface the questions like some dentist says, I don't have the time, blah, 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 blah. I don't have the time. Listen, yeah. you, you have two different ways of doing this. Either see more patients and get less time or convince fewer patients. And now you have more time. Right. You know what I mean? So, so if you are, if you don't have time, there's a reason why Peter, Marvin, and I have time. It's because we take appropriate diagnostic, diagnostic records and enroll patients. So if you don't enroll patients and you're willing to get a 20% treatment acceptance rate, then yes, don't take photos. Just, just keep going up to bat and striking out. You'll never know any different. But uh, I would think that if you don't have time, that's a really big deal. And well, here's the thing about all this time it. that you're saying, Craig. It takes, st- in my experience, and Marvin, you can, I'm sure you'll agree, because you, 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 a large part of your practice is cosmetics as well, or a large part of what you individually do. But having to explain something is actually the longest amount of yeah, time. Pictures, Trying to explain something without words. a picture if someone gives you the excuse, I, we don't have time to take pictures, I would say, well, you're spending 10 times that amount trying to explain it verbally. Right. Exactly. That's, it's so true. And, and that's, the thing is, and this is where I think docs get caught up, is that they need to not take the pictures. It needs to be mm-hmm. someone in their practice mm-hmm. that has, they don't even have to be great at it. I took a, a, I've got a girl out of high school. She just liked taking pictures of her phone. And I just said, hey, can you do this? And I just taught her, and it's just done. It's automatic. I don't even have to think about it. And that's how you, you just got to get it. It's just like I, I, have, an I have a math. I have a math equation for you. How, how many minutes does it take to take the photos for your assistant? Total? I, them, I think 
five to seven minutes. Okay. So five to seven minutes and how many pictures do you get? Ten. 10? Yeah. Okay. And then how many times over that's the, uploaded but that's probably end start end. to finish uploaded. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going somewhere with this because okay, we all, we yeah. all have agreed that a picture speaks a thousand words, right? Yep. So you have 10 pictures, 10,000 words. How long does it take to speak a thousand words, by the way? Seven yeah. minutes to speak a thousand words. So seven times 10, uh-huh. 70 minutes. So your photos will speak 70 th- or 10,000 words. 10 times 7 minutes, 70 minutes. So your photographic series, you want to say that much? Or you want to just let this, the pictures do the talking? <laughs> I like that. I'm so yeah, stealing that. Yeah, yeah take it. The, just credit it, me every time you hear it from he, now he's, on. He's taking the air conditioning vent and yeah. now the, uh, the mask. Marvin, I'm going to yeah. just say right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this over to, to a lawyer afterwards. If I see that there's McKinney AC and you stick a scope up the vent, <laughs> I want a piece of that shit. Okay, just a small, you, you don't have to give me much. You can just take me out to dinner once a week or something. Fair enough. But if you stick a little camera up the up the thing and say, you know how many people would actually buy when they see their AC vents? Oh, my God. I would. I want that done. Really? It's never been done. But yeah. we digress. But it's true though. It's a thousand, a thousand words is seven minutes and there's no one that can describe it as well because we speak dental as well. So we say, you see your lower left canine? No, which tooth is that? It's that tooth. They can just see the whole thing. Like what's wrong with that? You mean your molar? No, I don't know. It's that back one. I don't know what it is. And it's truly, it's truly too. I think the more, the more we talk um, and Marvin, I know you ascribe to this too. Like my most successful consultations are the ones where I and you know, is it, there's an inverse relationship to how long I spend in the room and then enrollment, right? Yeah, right. The shorter you, oh, it's For different. Sure. Exactly. Right? So this, you know, when, you know, if, if you're spending 15 minutes of time or 20 minutes of time or whatever it is, right. The longer, all you have a chance to do is kind of unsell the treatment or uneducate Craig. There you go. And, and by the way, to doctors, we all do this. We love to hear ourselves speak doctor. When <laughs> we so become cool. dentists, we, we, I was watching the, uh, the movie, The Hangover. I was flying back from Vegas last night. I was watching the, the you know, and it was funny because the, the dentist goes to the emergency room and he's like trying to look at the medical records. And he's like, you know, I'm a doctor. He's like, I know you've told me that nine times, but you're actually a dentist. And it's funny because once we get minted as a doctor, we, we reassemble who we are and we want to speak doctor. It makes us feel good. We love it. Just like the macro, the micro photography, we do that, which patients don't give a shit about. We love speaking doctor and we love to say amount, you have three amalgams. I walked into one of my doctors the other day. I was listening to him because he's right by my office and I like outed him right in front of the patient too. You have three amalgams and they put, they wiped off the occlusal anatomy. And I say, Hey, I know you guys are having a conversation here, but you mind if I interrupt you guys? And the doctor, Mike is kind of cool. He's funny. He, he's like, no, not at all. I'm like, Hey, to the patient, I'm like, Hey Joe, what is an amalgam? He's like, um, I don't know, but just, just try to guess what it is. I know you don't know, but just guess what it is. What does it sound like to you? <laughs> well, amalgam means like putting two things together. I, I'm like, just try, try anything. I kept pushing him and he couldn't even come up with anything remotely. So I'm like, what is your occlusal anatomy? He's like, I don't know. I, I, you know, I can't figure it out. I'm like, what was your chief complaint today? He's like, my chief complaint was my teeth had fillings and they really feel smooth. So we could have actually taken that patient and said, hey, the guy took a uh, drill and drilled off all the grooves off your teeth. The grooves are important because they help us chew better. Would you like us to put the grooves back on? We could do some, some type of dentistry, some porcelain that replaces that. Would that interest you? Yes. This guy went up doing nothing because <clears throat> we were talking amalgam, occlusal anatomy, periodontium, and we lost them. But the re- and, and I well, talked probably to Probably because you about- scared the shit out of him and you came in as the second doctor being, hey, Joe, I'm going to give you an interrogate you on what you think dental terminology is. Well, no, I mean, I had a funny way. I'm like, we were all kind of laughing. I'm like, I'm just curious because we sometimes speak dental to patients. I'm guilty of it as well. What do you think these words mean? Because there's obviously a reason that doctors continue to do it. Like if Mm -hmm. I was speaking Chinese to you uh, and I was trying to convince your AC to be fixed, you're not speaking the same language they won't buy. You have Mm -hmm. to communicate a common language and we don't speak English. We don't speak English to patients. I guarantee you, Bruce Baird and Marvin Berlin and you and me and all these guys that are really high level producers, we just keep it simple. That tooth is broken. It's sick. Right. Problem solution. Problem Let's solution. fix it. Right. And then you see all these guys are like, you're know, occlusal anatomy and amalgam and, you know, the retronathic uh, procline, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but that God is damn. the default, Craig. That, like we've damn. said in the past, that is the default of doctors and dentists, when, especially when we get uncomfortable. And sometimes like consultations. But not even, com- not even be comfortable. You would rather hear yourself speak a bunch of dental bullshit than help people. That's scary yeah. to yeah. me. 
that your identity around who you are as a doctor supersedes your, your, your obligation to help a patient. That's scary. I don't think it's intentional is my point. Imagine if your pilot got on, you know, and started talking <laughs> to you like, there's some uh, cl- cat, clear oil turbulence. You know, we have an upper level low affecting the, you know, sub, subtropical jet. You know, I'm going to descend and maintain two five level, you know, but there's a freezing level at seven five. They don't want to hear that. They're like, it's going to be a little choppy. Buckle your seatbelt. Yeah. Pilots don't speak to you that way. There's a, I, I'm a pilot. There's a, there's a way of speaking to a, a pilot. Great, that's pilot. A great, that's Come a great in metaphor. for landing with, with uh, I've got information tango, clear for two six, descend and maintain two five you know, heading 170. But how about if I talk to my passengers that way? Fucking no one fly the airline. But we're dentists doing that all over the place. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering why we can't get ahead. Uh, just maybe I need to take uh, another course. And you get back to your, pri- you know, so I'm sorry. When I'm, I went off of a rant on a rant. That was a good one. Mar- Marvin, are you still here? We need I'm to, we need to insert Craig's rants. Just like pop up something on the screen. Like here it goes. Sorry. It just here gets goes. me upset because we have all this. We're trying to help people and Marvin's dedicated his life to helping people. And they will do everything he says and go back and go do what they used to do. And then blame him. Oh, I went to his photographer. Nothing changed. Take, you know, cause you got to freaking change yourself. Yep. It'll pop in my Invisalign. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Sorry. No, it's fun. And, and I, I, and Craig, you're right. It's just, it, it, we've got to talk to, I mean, we, in fact, part of my lecture, my other lectures, we have a big list of words that we don't say anymore. Like that we say to dentists, copious, you know, like you would never say something. Gross debridement. Yeah. yeah. Gross debridement. Yeah. Scaling no. and root planing. Yeah. You want to sign me up for that. that I want my cool. roots planed. <laughs> I don't want a planer. You know what a planer is? A planer sign is a, no, but you yeah. ever used the planer? Yeah, the wood, pl- wood planer. Yeah, yeah, like imagine like there was a torture scene in a movie where they did that to someone. They were shaving oh. skin off the guys. That's, that's planing. Yeah. That's How about nice. we take your roots? Aren't my roots covered by my gums? Don't worry. Marvin, that should them. be, we need to, I want, I, w- I wish you would publish that list of stuff that we could make like a dental, you know, like all the billionaires did the giving pledge and they signed their list of things they're going to do. We need to have something in, in dentistry. Like here's the words that we've decided to never use again as a profession and have people like sign the I've list. Got it. Of- I'll send it to you. <laughs> I've, got, I've got about 20 of them. And- I, once, <laughs> I once had a patient that said they didn't want a root canal. I said, okay, we won't, we won't complete a root canal, but what we will do is you'll be in pain. You're in pain. So we're just going to take the nerve out from the inside of the tooth and the, then we'll see how you feel. Okay. That sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, we did it. She felt great. And a couple of months later, I'm like, you know, the only thing that's different now is we'd want to fill the, the canal in there. And she goes, yeah, but is that a root canal? I'm like, well, do you feel better? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, we took the nerve out. We took the nerve out of the tooth. So we, you know, that that's, um, you know, starting a root canal. I was like, okay, well, you know, it didn't hurt. Then, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and fill it. But it's like this idea. I hear yeah. these. Yeah. So true. I don't want a metal implant. I want a zirconia implant because they're learning more now. Yeah, so true. So, Marvin, um, yes, getting back. To, so, what what does your teaching look like? Are you doing it online? Are you doing? I do it's all online. I'm oh, doing really? A, in fact, I've got That's a cool. uh, a webinar. Com- um, in fact, I'm creating a whole online course synopsis and it's starting with photography um where we're doing uh, i'm doing a webinar on december 10th uh-huh. so about an hour and a half two hour webinar and it's going to go through i mean a to z photography just just go to dentalpix.com it's the dental p-i-c-s dentalpix.com and uh-huh. just sign up for the webinar it's a free webinar and uh we're going to go through and just is really? it one of those web? It sounds to me like it's a webinar that actually teaches you stuff. Most of the webinars I get, it's every, everyone's like saying like, "Oh, and we'll tell you if you sign up for this thing." Yeah, wow. we're gonna. There's, uh, it, it's gonna be good. I've, I've made it to where I really think there's a. It's packed with Value. nonstop. Yeah. You're gonna walk away and you can take pictures Monday morning, and you know where to buy your camera, you know how to set it up, and do everything that you need to do. Um, and, and then I've got a whole, uh, you know, at the end of the webinar, we talk about a course I've got, which is a, a to Z, anything you want to know about photography. And but it's made for is, auxiliary too, right? Like you're saying yeah, that, okay. I'm encouraging it. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm strongly encouraging that they either have their staff watch or um, I'm going to make it where their team can learn it as well. Cause it's really, it's, that's the only way this works. It, yeah. it just, I, I uh, that's Miguel and I differed about that because he was really pushing the dentist to take pictures and we have different practices and there's no doubt. I mean, yeah, which is fine, but uh, you know, I just, you're, you're going to, we're not productive. We need to have the handpiece in our hand, period. Case closed. Has well, not- tell me, tell me a little bit more about it. I want to, I want, I, I know you want to be de- delicate, but what, when you say we have different practices, 
I want to talk about that. What, 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 what type of different practices? No, I mean, well, Miguel teaches, he works in a very small, he's a prosthodontist in Boston. It's more boutique. Uh, in a gorgeous facility. And, and just, you know, I, I bet, I, I don't, I haven't seen his schedule. I, I bet he doesn't. Uh, can I tell you a little bit about it? Cause he told me about it. He told oh, us yeah, about it on ahead. the podcast and this was public. It was just after we hit record. He's like, I'm like, so what do you do? He's like, actually, I do it all. Like my, my hygienist, uh, we have two hygienists on maternity leave right now. So if you look at my schedule in the last couple of months, I've been doing a lot of SRP and cleanings. Um, and he also said, I do a lot of cervical fillings sometimes too. So um, I know that we look at us prosthodons and say, oh, he probably wouldn't do this or that. But in actuality, he, does, he, he admitted yeah. that he does a lot of cleanings. Um, I haven't, what, when's the last time you did a cleaning, Dr. Berlin? Uh, that, that would be never. <laughs> Dental school. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it happens. Yeah. But it's, but it's just important to, you know, it's just yeah. important to, uh, you, you want to, you want to pick, you, you want to choose what you're trying to accomplish. Like if you really have an inkling to learn how to be a high productive super GP, go find a high productive super GP. If you really want to find like a guy, you know, you, you want to just choose your mentors carefully and you want to pick what you want to be and you don't, mm -hmm. you want to make it intentional about your education. Yeah, the success leaves clues is what you're saying. Essentially, exactly. find the person who's doing it right. and, and, and look for that but, as a mentorship. But, but look at how disconnected we, we have consultants, Marvin, that are charging our colleagues 35000 45000 Here comes Craig's rant, year. Marvin. Here comes it's, another no, it's rant. Very small rant, very small rant. We have consultants that charge dentists thirty-five dollars and $45,000 a year, and they actually don't help them get more productive or make mm. more money. And oftentimes, they've never run or worked in a dental office. So when you actually have to ask him very strategic questions like, what type of hygiene bonus structure should I give? They've never really seen what the good and the bad was. They can tell you this is the one we came up with, but they can't tell you like, this is what I came up with and why it didn't work and what they'll say. And so it's just, it's interesting that our field doesn't have the amazon.com review system to review all of <laughs> everything that we try. That would be good. It's coming. That would be good. It's, it's coming. It is good. But um, anyway, right, yeah. so what, I want to I want to go back to your webinar. So it's December tenth. Yeah. December tenth, yeah. Okay, so and and de or, people go to you can sign up at dentalpicks p i c s dot com. Yes, yes, dot com. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it's gonna and I'll, I'm gonna be answering questions if you and it's for if you've got a camera and just want to learn how to use it, I'm I'll help you there. If you if you've never picked up a camera, I'm gonna show you where I would get it because I've, I've researched the best place to buy them. Yeah. And, uh, and it's this, and we keep it, this is, and you know me, this is as no frills as humanly possible. This is not anything fancy. It's just a ring flash. It's just, this is not artistic. This is not to, you know, pictures you're going to put on your, uh, on a magazine. This is just to, to, to complete a co-diagnosis with your patient. And we learn the, I mean, I can teach the other, we do that. There's a, there's a place for it in cosmetics where you really need to take a, yeah. a picture and, and one to ones and well. yeah, up close. Yeah. Uh, but, and if you're going through the accreditation of the ACD, that's a whole, we, I teach that as well because I'm going through the accreditation. So it's, you know, it's all part of photography, but you've got to take that first step and you've got to get that mentality in your practice where it's just, it's the same as, as x-rays. It, it, you don't even, I, in fact, I show a slide in, in my presentation where I show a, um, a finished root canal, but I've purposely cut the apex off where it's short and I'll just go, I'll just put it up in there. It's okay, docs, what would, what's wrong with this picture? And everyone raises their hand and says, okay, well, you didn't show the apex. You have no idea. And then I'll just show, I'll show 20 other pictures where they're out of focus. They're too dark. There's fingers in it. There's whatever. And I'll go, okay, but you know, you, you gotta have that same, we just, they don't give a shit about photography and, and just the, the holding their team accountable we go over that and just like, okay, here's what we expect. Here's what we expected. I've got a little chart that everybody gets. So here's where you stand for every picture. It's like, I've, I've made it so simple. Simple. That, I love that. that all you, know, you gotta do is just show show your team. I want this. I want it to look like this. Here's where your patient sits. Here's where you sit. Go. You were talking about that dentist who had to develop it film. And that literally, I remember I was going through my accreditation process with AACD. And I remember literally having to develop it into slides and then, and then having to call the patient back because I they, they, it was unexposed and it wasn't the right way and all these things. Like we have the amazing ability, like 
what I'm trying to say is like, it's so much easier these days. And like, it's, oh. there's almost no excuse to not do it, especially in the context of like how painful it used to be. And, and people still did it and, it and it was valuable for that. I did it. I did. I used to go yeah. to Wolf Camera and develop it all just because yeah. you know, you're going to, I won't like, I won't talk to a patient if the photos are not bladed. I'll walk into a console okay. and I'll say, Hey, the photos uploaded. No, not yet. I'm like, I'll just hold it. Cause it's not worth my time. Like right. I, it, you're, you're speaking and no one wants to hear it. But Marvin, I love how you're putting it step by step in a granular format. And I think that's really important in, in education. Um, and a lot of people make it, sometimes it's just, they make it too complicated and it gets daunting and, and then people tune out and they say, oh, it's not for me. Yeah. So, you know, I love the keep it simple, stupid methodology. And you've always been someone who's, who's focused clinically at just everything on primary desired outcome. Like I, I've known you because I've, I've spent time with you personally in, in mastermind settings. And you've always been about like, here's the most efficient way to use our time and make money and do well and treat people, you know, kindly. And, you know, like all these things, like you've, you've always been someone I've admired for, you know, where, where the rubber meets the road and you just say, do this. Right. Do you this. know, it, maybe Pete, maybe, you know what it is, Pete? Cause I agree with you. I was Marvin. I've been watching you forever when you had your dollar new patient exams and I knew you were a thought leader and I was watching what you're doing and listen to how you're talking to people. It might just be a Texas thing. Cause in Texas, if you start <laughs> talking a bunch of bullshit, Texans will be like, I don't understand you doc. Slow it down. I'm not they, they're, they're real. They'll talk to you. So you're not going to get to speak doctor to a Texan. They might just be like, hey, I don't understand what the hell you're saying, buddy. I got a broken tooth. Yet. And you have to like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They just keep it real. Huh? They keep it real because yeah. Bruce is the it. same way. Bruce Baird Bruce is like that too. Yeah, Bruce is right down the road. Yeah, we... Well, <clears throat> well, Marvin, it's a shame. I know you're going to be out of town. You know, we're having a summit in your neck of the woods. Well, at least your state, not, you know, yeah, know you're McKinney. But uh, oh, what's that? Yeah. A couple hours away. It's a so bummer long. that you can't be there because I would love for you to, you know, be there and and uh, um, you know. Man, I'm actually marrying my best friend and his wife. I mean, his, his fiance. He's. I'm literally learning how to. You're use. you're doing the ceremony. That's you're yeah. officiating. Yeah. I literally awesome. went online and got the like the little thing and. I'm what an honor! Here. What an honor! So speaks really, that's, that speaks but, so well about your character, buddy. That's awesome. That, that is really cool. Bad. But uh, man, for sure, down the road in the future ones, I would love to be there. Just, I mean, yeah, we've gotten, we got an email recently and a guy went up, he's been up in his production 27% since his uh, attending our podcast. I mean, attending our summit, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you guys have yeah. done, and congrats on what you guys have done. Really, yeah, really impressed. And thank just, you. We're trying. We're trying to book, help. The book is great. The, everything yeah, the, we just, we so just uh, read the Audible, so it should be out um, uh, in a week or two. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Well, Craig read the Audible. It would have been horrible if I had done that. No, trust people me, it was horrible with me doing it too. It was, yeah. it was, it was hard. Looking yeah. forward to listening to it in the car. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah man. Yeah. Well, Marvin, anything yeah. else to add before we uh, – we I, I see you're in your scrubs. I know you've got – you had an emergency patient today and a monkey bar accident. I did. I know. We're good, man. I just, just – uh, again, thank you guys for having me on. And uh, just absolute honor to be here. And, I, I, again, for the listeners, anybody that wants to learn photography, I'm here to help in any capacity. Um, just – Come December 10th. We'll put all that yeah. links and stuff on yeah. the uh, on our, our notes and stuff, but that's pretty easy to remember. The dentalpicks.com is pretty easy yeah. to remember. So yeah. I encourage you guys, if you're on the fence and want to know more about photography, Marvin's your dude for sure. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If, if that so, wasn't apparent through this podcast, I don't know what is. So <laughs> thanks for your time today, Marvin. It was awesome. You're thanks, a leader guys. in our profession, and I'm so thankful that I get to call you my friend. Thank you. Yeah. You too, Greg. Great. Y'all have a great day. See you guys. See you, pal. All right. Take, take care, care, Marvin. Bye bye.